Hi, I'm Heinbach and it's good to have you back. Welcome to the studio tour, something you guys have been asking me a lot to do. And now is the time. Thanks to my wife who is on camera and documenting everything and is trying to clandestinely close the door. <laughs> Come on, let's start. This video has been a long time in the making and <laughs> probably because I thought I could get this studio to be perfect but I realized it will never be perfect. It's always in a state of constant flux and I'm rejiggling things and it becomes alive through that. And I really like that process. And some things are fixed, but others are not. So let's start with the things that are new and fun and enjoyable. One thing that I've set up here is the Japanese synthesizer corner. There's a Varaku, video on that is there. There's a Zuiko ST50 and another Zuiko. And these all run to this little field kit and then they go to this sub mixer down here, which is a Telefunken Echo Mixer. And this is just a lovely little setup to make <laughs> traditional Japanese poetry music or <laughs> something different. very distorted but I kind of like that right now for its texture and that's mostly the Telefunken Echo Mixer behind me that does that. Sometimes I like to play things cleanly but oftentimes I like them with more grit. That's why I have all here little boxes and old mixes that allow for a lot of distortion range. But what I don't want distorted usually is the piano and I've got a new mic set up which is these extinct audio ribbon mics. Just the sound is something that I really, really enjoy and I'm happy to have found these microphones because they work well in here and with this old Bechstein Model 10 from the 1920s. I can move directly here to what is the modular corner. You can see my modulars, they're not like one connected, they have all different functions. And the ones that I mostly play is this one, this is my portable travel case. I really, really enjoy the setup that I have here and I use that a lot. I keep exchanging modules in here, what I need. Sometimes I like more analog stuff, so I pick stuff from this rack and put it in here. This case up top is now mostly used to control the Formanta UDS drum machine. And what we have here is the Pulsar 23, which is one of my main drum machines and a unit I really enjoy. It is to me more like a sound design machine than a rhythm machine, but I like it for both purposes. And it's really easy to get a beat going on this. just has a lovely sound, it's a beautiful instrument and it's really enjoyable to have this right next to the piano. One of the main concepts that I follow in this studio is islands and I got a video on that of course, but this island concept has grown and grown, which means as same as this Japanese corners over here, I've got a keyboard corner, a strange keyboard corner here. Islands means these are basically self-contained 
pieces in the studio that all go to the big mixer, but can work on their own beautifully. Maestro, my favorite Soviet synthesizer, video on that of course is also linked. This is the Elgam Carousel, which I simply fell in love with when I was at the Museo del Synth the Marchigiano. Carousel, it sounds healthy. The Maestro sounds very broken and together they create a nice range. Both of these again run through the Telefunken Echo Mixer, which adds more grid and its lovely space. And then they also run into this very broken copycat delay over there. This is one of the more lo-fi tape echoes that you can find. <laughs> like a little cat. I like using it as a mixer because it has a nice tone to it, I find. In this corner also is one of the newest keyboards I have here. It is actually the newest one, which is a Verzi Piano Star. <laughs> beautiful analog synthesizer which hides in the body of a Fender Rhodes. A Polyvox fell onto this lovely Fismo, which made me kind of sad, but it's fine. I just need to replace those keys. It's just cosmetics, but still it hurt. <laughs> full video on this at some point once I know it a bit more because it's hard to get into the depth into this without setting up a programmer because yeah you can't access all the programming functions from the surface of this. One of the most important parts of my studio is this chair. I really like to relax on this. I don't know why my wife is filming my shoes but apparently these are also very important. So <laughs> just over here is another island which is the Italian synthesizer island. And the one thing about my Italian synthesizers is most of them are broken. Some of them beautifully so, some of them not so beautifully so. Let's see if we can get sounds out of these. <laughs> This is one of the most beautiful synthesizers I know. But what's broken on this machine is that the pitch of the monophonic section is different to the pitch of the polyphonic section. So you get surprising chords all the time. This here is the Salton Programmer 24. And this has sadly something... Oh! Oh, it starts working! <laughs> because you are here. <laughs> oh.
yeah. No. So this is definitely in need of repair, but when it works, it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm able to make complete tracks with just that and a few pedals. And here everything runs into this Yamaha mixer, which is pretty lovely. This corner here is unfinished, so I'm not gonna talk about that. This is still a work in process and yeah, it takes some time, but it's gonna be super cool when it's done. Now, this table you might have seen a lot in my videos. So this is where I showed the overhead stuff. Right now we've got the Cicada system here, which I'm working on. And yeah, there's a camera up top, which I simply put jankily on this lighting stand, which is very wobbly. So I should probably replace it at some point, but yeah, it works for now. And if there's some wobbliness, I can usually get rid of that in post. And over here is the master recorder, the Telefunken M15 that I use in all of my music. This here, of course, is the wall of test equipment I built over the past years. Right now, I'm concentrating not on building it up bigger, I'm only focusing on what is in here. So one thing that needs to happen is that all these units need recapping because yeah, they might just explode and die on me. All of this test equipment runs into this humble Tascam 424 mixer and that's absolutely wonderful because it sounds fantastic. And it's rare that something this plastic sounds this good. I'm super happy with this mixer. And then of course a battery of guitar effects. We've got a lot of digital stuff here which I really like to combine with the analog test equipment. Um, and these are pedals that I really enjoy. Beautiful effects and it's nice to have all of this here because I can't run over to the mixer when I'm playing with this setup. I basically need to be here. So that's why I've got this island here and this was actually the first island that I built the first self-contained setup and one thing I'm considering is putting like one speaker here so I'm also uh, not reliant on the big speakers up there the hum you're hearing now is from the most classic of all keyboards in here it's a claviolina which runs through this beautiful vacuum tube amplifier and the nice thing is it just fits right here. It's pretty small. This was meant to be put underneath a piano. And now... <laughs> I hope that translated on the internal microphones here, but it sounded absolutely massive in the room. Now, up top, I've got the classic synthesizer, the Roland SH2. It's one of the first analog synthesizers I got pretty cheaply, I think, back in the time. And I've kept this forever because it sounds fantastic. Then, underneath, got a Juno 60. Again, something that I've had for a long time and played for a long time. Underneath that, a Fender Rhodes, which I've also had for ages, probably like 20 years now, or 15 years at least. Oh. 
all of these things run together. They're all synced to the TR606, which is modded to be a TR608. And then I've got this humble little Cork SQ1, which sequences the SH02. And that's a self-contained track making setup. Like all the other instruments, this runs into the mixer. And this is a Ramsa VRS4424, which I got like for 300 bucks around the corner. So on this mixer, I have four effects and four subgroups and all are meant to absolutely wreck signals. I can spread signals around to test equipment analyzers. I can spread them around to very esoteric hardware, also from science laboratories and ex-military and then absolutely slice signals apart. And I really want to do a video on that soon. So that's something to come. But one thing that I have done to make the sound of this as beautiful as possible is I've basically made a master bus. On the master bus, there's first the Siemens U273 compressor, which I absolutely love because it sounds like dark chocolate on a signal. Then there's two Eckmüller equalizers to add a bit of high end and bass. And those are amplified by top 72 A's vacuum tube preamps. All of this goes to the Telefunken M15 tape machine. And that's, yeah, my sound. I got myself a comfy cushion and put this synthesizer down here because my youngest daughter likes to play with it. So most of this setup is made for standing or alternating between sitting and standing or yeah, just <laughs> sitting down here, moving there. It's very much about movement in this whole studio. Well, the whole studio is analog. Of course, there's a computer at the heart of everything. And I've got nothing against using computers. They're fun and easy to edit, especially. And editing on tape is something that's rather difficult <laughs> compared to editing on a computer. The computer is an iMac 24 M1 from last year. The interface that I'm using is an RME Fire Face UFX 2, which has been really good to me and hasn't let me down so far. My main speakers are Head Mark II. I'm endorsed by them. Just lovely company and fantastic speakers. Thank you for endorsing me. My secondary mix check monitor is a classic. It's an Auratone. I listen to it in mono and I drive it via an old school amplifier. It's, let me check. I'm just going down here to check. It's a Crown D75. The best speakers make no sense when the room is not treated. I had for the longest time DIY treatment with just some Basotech plates and, and some giant dope traps that my wife and me built together, for which I'm ever grateful. But since last year, I had the whole room treated professionally by Kiss Your Ears from Berlin. And they put up all of these bass traps, which just make the acoustics in this room so much better. Everything below 150, beautiful. But the low frequency here that we really want to take care of um, has not even dropped one decibel. 
and although the effectivity of these traps rolls off at 40 uh, it should still in this space take away some of the energy of that peak problem may not even be in the room because this ceiling cavity since we've been drilling we've learned that it's not dampened so now I have the frustrating situation that I actually, before I would build any resonators, as I say, because there's no attenuation there whatsoever of one dB or half a dB, I need to cut open the ceiling and dampen it because, yeah, the builders cut corners some years ago. Getting acoustic treatment was definitely the second best thing I ever did to make this room a studio. The best thing is probably the addition of this cup holder, which has saved so much gear from drowning in coffee, water, beer or wine. Third best thing, and as someone who's not handy with DIY, making this sliding thingy here. That made me pretty proud. And here's the Novation Summit, which I use also as a master keyboard to control like a few other things in that rack over here and everything in Ableton Live. But yeah, this makes me rather proud, <laughs> silly as it is. One thing you might have noticed, this is definitely not a professional workstation desk. This is just a heavy oak plate that used to belong to the manager of Pavarotti. I simply put stands under it and I put it on a rack and I put an Ikea rust rack on here. I built a little wooden shelf over here myself so everything would fit up. At some point, I think I have to redo all of this. Like, get a better patch bay this one is breaking down but I feel this is constantly growing so it's hard to decide on the final form so it just adapts to the needs that I have let's go to the last little corner and that's basically yeah here it starts here and goes over there now this is one of my favorite drum machines, the Metasonics D1000. I've paired the Metasonics D1000 with a Yaskul F Mobenthi system that you see here. I got this on loan from Patchpoint and together it just makes beautiful noises. It's just fun to have at the same place where I added such a creative playground. And yeah, let's talk about the video stuff a bit because I'm mainly using this Atom Mini Pro ISO to mix cameras if I do a live stream. And usually it's routed also to this Blackmagic camera over there, which I use to film all my talkies. I use this Giffel microphone for my voice because I really like the sound of it. It's a vintage one. It's a 691 with a UM70 capsule. For editing, I use the regular iMac keyboard together with the touchpad. I really like working with a touchpad because I can easily swap it from left to right because I edit with both hands so I can alleviate any tension. So when this hand gets tired, I can just switch and it's a different movement. I've trained myself to work that way out of necessity. Now we are exactly at the end of the circle of the tour. This is where we started right here. We went here and then went all the way around here. Here's a lovely Vermona drum machine from the former GDR, which I'm exploring still. And then here's a Syntrax, the fabulous Erica synthesizers machine, which is also used in my case as a sub mixer for many things. The little Yaskul Mobenti system runs through here, as does the Waldorf Microwave. This is the Waldorf Microwave, which is also processed by the Syntrax, which just adds a lovely combination of analog oscillations, wavetables, and dual analog filters, basically. And that's it for the studio tour. There's so much more that I could have shown you, but it's literally impossible to show you all the things in here. It's a bit overwhelming for myself also. 
but I hope you got a better idea what this place is about. And maybe at some point I'll show you Studio B and Studio C, but that is for another video. If you want to get to feel how it is in this studio, I made a bunch of plugins with audio things, Spitfire Audio, and there's an upcoming one where you'll get an even closer look inside my studio. That's it for this video. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below or visit the subreddit, though they would probably not be able to tell you much more about my studio than I do. So thank you all for watching and thanks to my dear wife for debuting as <laughs> the cinematographer for this today. Bye. See you in the next one. Cool. Ha, 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 ha.